Hi everybody and welcome to another week of LearnBridge.NYC's 0750 Focus. This week's focus at our games in New York was the takeout double. We're going to see several of the examples that we saw during our games on Thursday. We're going to talk about different situations where we use this bid effectively. The first opportunity for success was on board two. East started the auction with one diamond, and South has the perfect takeout double. They have four cards in all three of the unbid suits. They have an opening hand or better, 12 or more points, and they have shortness in the opponent's bid suit, which is diamonds. This is absolutely perfect. The West player may have bid three diamonds at your table, and if they did, you can be assured that they played in the preemptive raise focus duplicate we had several weeks back. This is an excellent opportunity to get into the opponent's way with these cards. We have five diamonds and three points. You might say, I'm never, ever bidding with this hand. But the vulnerability is very favorable for you. You are not vulnerable. The opponents are. You know you have a very likely nine card diamond fit or more. And you want to get in the opponent's way in these situations because we want to make their decisions much more difficult if we can. On this hand, the North player does not have a difficult decision. They have more than enough points for game. They are assured of a spade fit because partner doubled, and they have to have at least 4-3 in the major suits to do that over a minor. So we know we have game. We know we have a fit. So we bid four spades, and that's where this auction will end. Board 3 showed us several interesting scenarios. West has an excellent takeout double, but South has to know that this is an opening hand. Look at the South cards for a moment. They have the Ace and King of Spades and the Ace of Hearts. This is going to become a rule for all of you after this. Whenever you have Ace, King in one suit and an Ace in another suit, you should open the bidding if given the chance to. This is what's called three quick tricks. And whenever you have three quick tricks, you should open the auction. So, with the south cards, we would always open one spade. If you had a different shape, let's say you had four diamonds and three spades instead, you would still open the bidding, you would just open it one diamond, right? Ace, king, ace should always be an opening bid. And if south opened one spade, West has an excellent takeout double. Opening hand or better. They have four cards in the heart suit, which we should almost always have when we double a major. And they have support for the unbid suits. Some people might have bid one no trump with this hand, and that was a big mistake. Because when the opponents open in a suit and we decide to bid no trump, we should always have a stopper in their suit. And jack five is definitely not a stopper. So we would not want to bid one no trump with this hand. The north player will raise the two spades. And remember, when your opponents double, don't let that dissuade you from making your normal bid. If your raise is still available, you make it. And this has a very nice side effect because it makes it more difficult for the east-west players to enter this auction. This auction after two spades should go pass, pass, pass. And the reason is... Both the East and the West players should be very nervous with this type of vulnerability. They are vulnerable, North-South is not, so this is a very risky proposition for both of us. The East players certainly don't have a bid. They have a very bad balanced hand. The West players may consider doubling again to keep the North-South pair from playing in their fit, but you're taking on too much risk in this situation to do that. So passing is usually going to be correct in this spot. Board 5 uh, should see quite a bit of action early on in the auction. The North player opens one club. East has a very good double, 14 points. They have at least, at least 7 cards in the major suits. And they have support for the diamonds as well. So they make their takeout double. South can bid one diamond, which should be natural, and it's 6 to 9. And now West does not have to bid if they don't want to. Right After the double, the one diamond bid just takes away that bid. So West is no longer forced to bid. When they do bid, as they should on this hand, they're going to show values to their partner. Right, This is no longer 
zero to eight points because they're bidding at the lowest level. They didn't have to bid. So the fact that they chose to bid should show some values and certainly four spades or more in this situation. North has a, an interesting choice here. They can bid one no trump. They could also pass, which is very reasonable. If they pass, East should absolutely pass. Remember, they have made their takeout double. They have shown partner their values and their shape in one bid. They do not need to tell the same story over again. Right? They just pass. If partner had enough for game, they would have bid game. Or they would have Q-bid. They have lots of opportunity to show good hands. They didn't. They just said, hey, I want to compete in spades, so I bid one spade. So we pass. The south player can bid two clubs now. They have excellent shape. They can be relatively certain that they have a club fit on this auction. And they have the possibility of playing diamonds as well. Right? But they certainly want to bid. They don't want to let the opponents play one of a suit. West will continue with their good shape by bidding two spades. They could also give two hearts a shot here, considering they have both majors, but two spades is pretty normal. And now it will go pass, 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 and West will be playing in two spades. Board 7 sees a pretty straightforward auction. South should always preempt with this hand. Excellent six-card suit. And West has a perfect double. Now, West does have a five-card suit, but this is a five-card club suit. The real important feature of their hand is they have two four-card majors and obviously shortness in diamonds. So they certainly want to get in there with the best and most descriptive bid, which is clearly the double. If we had a five-card major, we may consider bidding that directly over two diamonds. But with a five-card minor and both major suits, we're usually better off doubling. because The north hand could raise to four diamonds. They should be... Relatively certain they have a 10-card diamond fit. They could also just bid three diamonds. And we're doing this not because we have interest in playing higher. We're just doing this to compete with the opponents, right? We want to make their job as difficult as we can. East has a very normal decision to bid four spades, right? They know that we have a fit in the major suits. They have a very good hand, and they certainly have a really great shot at making game opposite a takeout double. So they bid four spades, and that's where this auction should end. On board nine, we see another perfect takeout double. East opens the bidding one heart. South has four spades and four clubs and diamonds. The perfect shape for the takeout double. They have 12 or more points. With perfect shape, you might even shade down a little bit to 11, and if you're past 10, even 9 and 10 counts, right? You want to show this shape because you have so many opportunities to find fits, so we double. Those of you that played in the 0-750 to Qubit and preemptive raise game should have bid three hearts with the West cards, right? And I know some of you did, and it was just such a great bid. This is a preemptive bid. When the opponents double, they're trying to come into our auction. We want to make it as difficult as we possibly can for them to find a fit and find an appropriate level. Here, we use the law of total tricks. We have at least nine trumps, which means we can safely compete to the nine trick level. And we do that immediately because of our values. We have a bad hand. We want to disrupt the opponent's ability to communicate. And on this hand, it's very effectively done. Most of you would just pass this right out, and that is not a bad option with any of the cards around the table because it's very difficult to decide what to do over three hearts. Because you... And these bids make it really tough for you to make excellent decisions always, right? And that's why they're so good. And when you have the ability to make them, it's a plus for your side, right? Anytime you can make the opponent's lives miserable, only bridge-wise, please. <laughs> Anytime you can make their job really tough... Right? You're, going, you're doing your job as a good opponent. Board 13 saw a good representation of what's called the power double or the big double. Right? Sometimes when the opponents open the bidding, our hand is too strong for any of our calls that we would normally make. We can't overcall with this hand. We have 20 points. We can't jump to two no trump, as some of you did try to do. And I have to tell you, it's a great idea if you're the opening bidder, because that's exactly what it shows, 20 to 21. But as an overcall, it shows the two lowest ranking unbid suits. It's used as the unusual no trump, right? So if you bid two no trump, it was a decent idea if you didn't see the one heart bid to your right, right? If they open one heart and you bid two no, it's not going to mean the same thing. So 
it's a two-step process when we have hands like this. We start with a double. And West passes, and North, assuming this is a normal takeout double, just bids two diamonds. East passes, and now South completes the description of their hand. They now bid two no trump. And this should show right around 19 or 20 points, right? The overcall of one no trump would have shown 15 to 18. So the fact that we doubled first, and then we bid no trump with our next bid, we are showing north of what we had, would have shown with a one no trump overcall. North should not care about this two no trump bid. It's really bad for their hand, right? They only have a four count, but it's a reasonable pass with these cards as well, right? And they end up playing 2 no trump in the south. Board 15 was another great double opportunity. South opened one heart. And West has an excellent double. 13 points, 4 spades, and cards in the other two unbid suits. So we double. North should pass. And now East... A lot of you had trouble with this one. You didn't know what to bid with this particular hand. And if you think long enough, you kind of come up with it just by saying to yourself, my goodness, I can't bid anything. The one key to this hand is the heart suit. You have jack, ten, eight, five of hearts. This is a stopper in the heart suit. In fact, it's a very solid stopper because you have the ten including the jack. So with this hand, you would bid one no trump. This is the one minimum bid that will always show values after the double, right? You're not going to bid one no trump with a zero count because you certainly don't have stoppers anywhere. So whenever we bid one no trump, we can just assume it has values, probably somewhere around seven to nine or seven to ten points. And that's where this auction may end, except South is going to rebid their heart suit. Most likely be where it ends. When it gets back to East, they may consider bidding two no trump, but that seems like a little bit of a stretch considering they may very well be beating two hearts. So it's probably better to pass, especially considering that north-south is vulnerable on this hand. So if they can beat it one or potentially two tricks, they might get an excellent score. So they're going to pass two hearts and hope for the best. And notice it looks like on a lot of leads we're beating this two tricks, so plus 200 should be a really nice score. Remember, don't think you always have to bid with these types of hands, right? You can pass and defend, especially if you rate to go plus that way, right? You want to find, usually, the best avenue to get a plus score. And sometimes it's passing. Board 16 saw one of our last opportunities for a takeout double. The auction starts with two passes and East opens one spade. South has an excellent takeout double, 14 points, four cards in the heart suit, and support for diamonds and clubs, so they double. West can now just bid two spades. All right, again, make that bid, raise when you have your raise, and now we make it more difficult for the opponents to take a call. All right, the north hand would have normally responded one no trump had West passed, but because they've bid two spades, they're now just going to pass. And that folks, is where this auction will also end. We should have been playing in two spades by the east on board 16. Last but certainly not least in the set of boards was board 18. Now, aces, we only played 1 through 15, so we didn't get to see this board, and if you were playing east-west, you should be very thankful. This ends in a very bad way for the east-west players. East opens one diamond, and South has the perfect takeout double. Again, they do have a five-card club suit. However, the fact that their shape is absolutely perfect and they have both four-card majors means doubling is far preferred to overcalling two clubs. And another reason that you're probably not going to be thinking about, but it is a very slight possibility that partner especially on these types of hands where you're avoiding diamonds, has a whole lot of diamonds. So if we bid two clubs, we may very well be playing games somewhere and making it. However, we may have given up the opportunity to defeat the opponents by playing diamonds. So on this hand, this is exactly what has happened. One diamond is opened by the east. South doubles absolutely take out. Right? Partner's supposed to bid unless... 
unless they have this huge diamond suit and a reasonable hand themselves, they are going to pass. And what they're doing is they're converting this takeout double into a penalty double. And it's because of the number of diamonds they have and the strength in their hand. They think that this might be their best plus score on this hand. And let's see if they're going to be right. It looks like on several of our leads, we're going to beat this three tricks for plus 500. It's not a bad plus score to lock up on boards like this, folks, because there's no guarantee that you can make a game, especially if you're looking at the north cards with only nine points and the certainty that partner is short in diamonds. All right, so passing is a very good pathway to what is quite likely your best plus score. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the terrific attendance we've been having at our Focus Duplicate Games. Again, they are on Thursdays in the morning at Cavendish, 9.45 start time, and in the evening at Aces Bridge Club, 6.30 p.m. start time. Hope to see you next week. Until then, take care. This is Rob Barrington signing off. Thank you.